In this video, we're going over the hand tie-in lung channel. We'll start by reviewing the general functions and characteristics of the lung. Next, we'll explore the channel pathways, including the bull, divergent, and sinew channels. Then we'll get into the individual point functions, taking an in-depth look at each point. And finally, we'll do a quick review, just touching on the major functions of the major points. If you want to follow along, you can download the slides or the flashcards. There are links to those below. But this is going to be a long one, so let's go ahead and get started. So now where we start talking about a channel, I like to start by discussing the normal functions and characteristics of the channel. Because once we know what a healthy, balanced lung channel is supposed to look like, that will help us understand what happens when things go wrong. And it will also give us some insight into what the points on this channel can do and when we would choose to use them in treatment. So I always like to start this discussion with chapter eight of the Su Wen. This is a section of the Neijing where each organ is assigned a government office. This is where we say that the heart is the emperor or the liver is the general. Well here, chapter eight of the Su Wen says, the lung holds the office of prime minister and is the issuer of management and regulation. So what does this mean? Well, first, when we say that the lung is the prime minister, we mean that the lung is the prime minister to the heart. So the heart is the emperor and reigns over everything, but the lung is assisting the heart and taking care of the day-to-day -day details. So this tells us that there's a strong relationship between the heart and the lung in terms of governing the body's functions, and that's why they sit next to each other in the chest, sharing a residence in the upper jaw. Second, we say that the lung is the issuer of management and regulation. So what does it manage and regulate? Well, the lung manages and regulates the flow of qi and blood throughout the body. Maybe you remember from fundamentals class, we learned this statement, the lung faces the hundred vessels. Well, this is related to this idea of management and regulation. Remember, the heart governs blood and the lung governs qi. But we also say that qi is the commander of blood. So what this means is the lung assists the heart in carrying blood to all parts of the body. So again, the lung is acting as an assistant or prime minister to the heart, and it manages and regulates the flow of qi and blood through the vessels. So one example of this might be a qigong practitioner. Qigong is essentially a set of breathing exercises. So by controlling the breath, the qigong practitioner can guide qi to specific parts of the body and regulate its flow. So this is an example of using your breath or your lung to regulate the flow of qi. Or as another example, think of a person who is nervous or anxious. Their heart is racing or pounding in their chest. Well, this person can take deep breaths in order to help relax themselves. They're essentially using their lung to slow their heart rate and calm their heart shen. So this is another example of the relationship between the lung and the heart, that the lung is the assistant or prime minister to the heart. So when we start looking at point functions and indications, we'll see examples of this relationship between the lung and the heart. Points on the lung channel can treat fullness in the chest, heart pain, or palpitations. Certain points treat conditions of the pulse, like weak pulse, choppy pulse, or absence of pulse. And because heat in the lung can get transmitted into the heart, there are certain points on the lung channel that can calm the heart spirit. So this little saying from chapter eight of the Su Wen gives us an overview of the lung's position in the overall functioning of the body, especially regarding its relationship to the heart. So next, let's take a closer look at the individual functions and characteristics of the lung itself and see how that helps us understand the points on this channel and how they can be used in treatment. So when you look at our list of functions, the first one is that the lung governs qi and controls respiration. Remember, the lung is a source of postnatal qi. It's where we get the da qi, or the qi of the air. And then, through our breathing, the lung manages and regulates the flow of that qi throughout the body. So clinically, if a person has qi deficiency, we might turn to points on the lung channel to help tonify. With lung qi deficiency, we might see things like shortness of breath, a weak voice, spontaneous sweating, or a tendency to get sick easily. 
But this action of governing qi and controlling respiration is very closely related to the second function, which is the lung controls disseminating and descending. This refers to the direction of the lung. On the one hand, we say that the lung disseminates or diffuses qi and fluids. And this refers to an outward movement, spreading qi and fluids to the skin and body surface. On the other hand, the lung has a strong downward direction. Unlike the spleen that raises the clear, the lung takes in the air that we breathe and sends that clear qi downward. That's what we mean when we say that the lung controls descending, or to use a Nigel Weissman term, depurative downbearing. So if the lung fails in its function of diffusion and depurative downbearing, that qi can rebel upwards, giving us symptoms like cough, wheezing, asthma, and shortness of breath. So these are other situations where we would use points on the lung channel for treatment. Next, we say that the lung regulates the water passages. So remember that there are several organs involved in fluid metabolism. Fluids enter through the stomach, the spleen sends those fluids up to the lung, then the lung turns those fluids into a fine mist, but also sends the fluids downward to the kidney and urinary bladder. Then we end up with this cycle of the kidney steaming the fluids upwards and the lung percolating the fluids back down. So this function of regulating the water passages is related to the lung's action of disseminating and descending. On the one hand, the lung disseminates the fluids outwards, keeping the skin moist. On the other hand, the lung is supposed to downbear the fluids to the urinary bladder. So if the lung fails in its function of regulating the water passages, that water can stagnate. One possibility is phlegm formation, especially if the stagnant water combines with heat or cold. Another possibility is water retention or edema, especially edema in the face, or sudden swelling of the limbs. Or we may see urination problems, like frequent urination, urinary retention, or bedwetting. So when we start looking at the functions of the points, we'll see that points on the lung channel can treat these conditions by restoring the lung's ability to regulate the water passages. Next, we say that the lung is responsible for the skin and body hair. Again, the lung is supposed to diffuse qi and fluids outwards to the surface, keeping the skin healthy and moist. So if the lung is deficient, we may see a dry, dull, pale complexion. But what's especially useful here is when we say the lung governs the skin, we also mean that it controls the opening and closing of the pores. The lung diffuses qi outward into the so li spaces, so we can use points on the lung channel to regulate sweating and to release the exterior in the case of an external attack. Next, each of the organs opens to an orifice. So just like the kidney goes to the ears or the heart sprouts in the tongue, the lung opens to the nose. So in our point functions, we're going to see that certain points along the lung channel are good for nasal congestion and sinus problems. And then we have a few other characteristics or classical sayings about the lung which may be useful to us here. Like we mentioned before, there's a saying that the lung faces the hundred vessels. Again, this is related to the lung's position as prime minister to the heart and its role of managing the flow of qi and blood. This is useful to us because we take the pulse at the wrist along the lung channel, and it also lets us treat certain conditions of the pulse, like a weak pulse or an irregular pulse. We also say that the lung is the delicate organ. Basically, whenever there's an attack, the lung is the first to be affected. So we might say certain things like the spleen is averse to cold or the stomach is averse to heat. Well, the lung is averse to everything. Heat, cold, dampness, dryness, and wind. And then, just because the lung governs the exterior, it's going to be the first to get hit by any external pathogen. In terms of the five shen, the lung houses the pool or the corporeal soul. This has to do with our sense of physicality. It gives us the ability to move and experience physical sensation. And when a person's corporeal soul is strong and healthy, that person will have an optimistic outlook. But if the pool is not healthy, that person will be susceptible to pessimism, sorrow, sadness, and grief. So clinically what this means is we can use the lung to treat certain emotional conditions like sorrow, sadness, and grief. So those are the functions of the lung. 
I know that was a very in-depth discussion, but I really believe that understanding these functions is the key to understanding these points and what they can do. So rather than just going through and memorizing a list of actions and indications for each point, we can understand why the points do what they do and why we might choose to use them in a treatment situation. Along those same lines, the second step in understanding these points is to understand the channel pathways. Knowing where these channels go and what tissues they connect to can give us even more insight into what these points can do. So let's start with the pathway of the primary channel. So here's the lung primary channel, and here are a few points we want to pay attention to. Number one, the lung channel starts with its internal pathway in the middle jowl. So if you ever get the question, where does the lung channel begin? Please do not say lung one. The lung channel starts in the middle jowl. Second, we know that every channel connects to its own organ and its yin-yang pair by way of its internal pathway. So here we see the channel connecting to the lung and the large intestine. But what we want to pay attention to is if the channel connects to any additional organs. So here, we see the lung channel traveling through the stomach organ. So this lets us know that we can select points on the lung channel to treat certain stomach conditions such as nausea, vomiting, and acid reflux. Next, we see the channel making this nice diamond shape across the chest. So when we get to the point functions, we're going to see points that can treat things like fullness in the chest or heart pain because this is where the channel pathway travels. And the really important one, the lung channel ascends to the throat. So the lung channel is going to be very important in treating things like sore throat, dry throat, or painful obstruction of the throat. After that, the channel emerges near the shoulder, and its external pathway goes down the radial side of the arm to the thumb. So we're able to treat conditions all along the pathway of that channel. And finally, we want to pay attention to this branch from lung 7 to the index finger, LI1. This is the path the chi takes to get to the next channel in the sequence of flow. So in the order of flow, lung to large intestine, to stomach, to spleen, and so on, this is how the chi gets from the lung channel to the large intestine channel, through this branch. So here we have an overview of the pathologies of the lung. All of these should make sense. Cough, wheezing, and asthma because the lung controls respiration and has a descending action. Congested and sore throat because the channel ascends to the throat. Fullness in the chest because the channel makes that diamond pattern across the chest and because the lung is in the chest. And then just pain along the channel. Next is the Lua connecting channel. Remember, Lua connecting channels always start at their Lua connecting point, which in this case is lung 7. The lung Lua channel then spreads across the thenar eminence and it connects to its yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel. So with the lung lua connecting channel, we can treat pain along the course of the channel, in this case, thenar eminence pain, and we can also treat conditions of its yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel. So in this case, we can treat nasal congestion. Now, as we saw, the lung channel doesn't travel up to the nose. It stops at the throat and comes back down. But the reason we can treat nasal congestion is because its yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel, does go to the nose, so we're able to treat it at this point because it's the yin-yang pair. And then, besides the pathway of the low connecting channel, chapter 10 of the Ling Shu also describes excess and deficiency conditions of each low. So for the lung Lu, for deficiency symptoms, we see shortness of breath and yawning, which makes sense because the lung controls respiration. And we also see frequent urination and enuresis, which also makes sense because, like we said, the lung regulates the water passages. For excess symptoms, we see hot palms or wrists because that's where the path of the channel goes. Next, we have the divergent channel. Remember the things we said about divergent channels. Number one, they strengthen the connection between yin and yang paired organs. So here we see the divergent channel connecting to the lung and the large intestine. Number two, they supply chi to the head and face. So again, we see the lung divergent channel going up to the throat, letting us treat things like sore throat. Number three, divergent channels reconnect to their yang paired primary channels. So here, the lung divergent channel connects to the large intestine primary channel at LI18, 
which again can help us treat nose problems because that's where the large intestine channel goes. Here's a summary of the pathway as well as the conditions that can be treated through the lung divergent channel. As you can see, we have nasal disorders like nosebleed and nasal obstruction and throat problems. So those are conditions that can be treated using points along the lung channel. And finally, we have the lung sinew channel. Remember, we said that sinew channels do not connect to the organs. So that's why you don't see any organs in this picture. The sinew channel generally follows the primary channel so it can treat pain in the muscles and joints along its pathway. With sinew channels, we generally say that they start at the extremities and ascend towards the head and trunk. So that's why we say that the lung sinew channel originates on the thumb at lung 11. And then we'll want to pay special attention to the binding sites. So the lung sinew channel knots or binds at the thenar eminence and at the center of the elbow. So if a person is feeling joint pain or musculoskeletal pain in these areas, points on the lung channel might be particularly suited for treatment. Then what's interesting to point out here is the sinew channel spreads over the ribs and lateral costal region. So when we start looking at the points, we'll see that some of them are indicated for pain in the lateral costal region. We can treat that because of the pathway of the sinew channel. So those are the channel pathways. And again, the reason we spend so much time looking at these is because understanding these pathways will help us understand why the points do the things that they do. So in order to understand point functions, we're always going to try to relate it back to three things. Number one, the normal physiology or functions and characteristics of the channel or organ, which we covered in part one. Number two, the pathways of the channels, which we just covered in part two. And number three, the category to which the point belongs, which we'll talk about as we go through each point. Think of it this way. There are 361 points on the 14 channels. If you try to simply memorize the functions and indications for each point, you're gonna have a hard time. But if you understand the organ, the channel pathways, and the point category, then you can start making connections and understand why the points do what they do. And at least for me, that makes it a whole lot easier to memorize. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the functions and indications of the points, starting with lung one. So lung one is on the chest, six soon lateral to the midline, level with the first intercostal space. And the name of lung one is zhong fu, which means middle palace. This is reminding us that the lung channel begins in the middle jiao, and also that this point can be used to treat middle jiao issues like nausea and vomiting. Lung one is also the front mu point of the lung. Remember, front mu points are where the chi of the organs gathers on the front of the body. So lung one acts primarily on the lung organ and not necessarily the lung channel. So I would say the main strength of lung one is treating excess conditions. This could be exterior pathogens like wind heat or wind cold that have penetrated into the lung organ, or it could be interior disharmonies like lung heat or phlegm in the lung. For example, if an excess pathogen is blocking the descending function of the lung, we might see things like cough, wheezing, and shortness of breath. So we can use lung one to descend lung chi and stop cough. Lung one also transforms phlegm, which is an excess condition. So it can treat things like coughing up phlegm or chest pain due to phlegm in the chest. It clears heat, treating heat in the chest, or these situations where heat is blocking the descending of lung chi. And it regulates the water passages. So again, if an excess condition is interfering with the descending function of the lung, the lung can no longer descend the fluids, and we may get acute swelling of the face. And like we said, lung one also has an effect on the stomach as well. Both the lung and the stomach have a downward action. The lung descends lung chi, and the stomach descends food. So a disharmony of one can affect the other. So lung one descends both lung chi and stomach chi, treating things like vomiting, retching, and abdominal distension. Now technically, we do see things like nasal congestion and throat obstruction, which might be considered disorders of the lung channel rather than the lung organ. But the idea here is, if there's so much excess in the lung organ, 
that might overflow into the lung channel. So by clearing it out of the lung organ, that might resolve those channel issues. But if we had things like nasal congestion and sore throat due to an external attack where the pathogen was still on the surface, we might not use lung one. We might prefer to use other points on the lung channel instead. So for lung one, I remember that it treats the lung organ and it's mostly used for excess patterns, especially when there's phlegm or pain in the chest. Lung two is above lung one, just below the clavicle, six soon lateral to the midline. And lung two is honestly not that interesting. Machiocha actually says that lung two is very similar to lung one in its actions, but less strong. Maybe something we could point out is that because lung two is close to the shoulder in the deltopectoral triangle, it can be used for shoulder pain, especially when there's difficulty adducting the arm. Lung three is on the arm, three soon below the axillary fold. And lung three is a window of heaven point. This one is special because most window of heaven points are located on the neck, and lung three is one of the few that is not. But the lung channel does go to the throat, so it makes sense that it could be a window of heaven point. So remember, these are the functions of the window of heaven points, and all of them are represented here. Window of heaven points treat disorders of the neck, and here we see lung three treats throat pain and goiter. Window of heaven points harmonize the flow of qi between the head and body, treating rebellious qi. And we see that here with cough and hemoptysis. Window of heaven points treat disorders of the sense organs, and here lung three treats dizziness and vision problems. Again, the lung has a descending function, so it's able to descend excess qi out of the head. Window of heaven points treat psycho-emotional disorders, and here lung three calms the corporeal soul, treating things like sadness, grief, and other shen problems. Besides being a window of heaven point, there are a few other interesting things we can note. Lung three cools the blood and stops bleeding. Remember, heat is one of the causes of bleeding in Chinese medicine. Heat causes things to speed up, so when heat gets into the blood, it can speed up the blood so much that it begins to move recklessly or frenetically outside of the vessels. So lung three can treat things like nosebleed or coughing up blood. And finally, we also see this funny indication of talking with ghosts or crying ghost talk. On the one hand, we could relate this to the fact that lung three is a window of heaven point and it treats psycho-emotional disorders and calms the corporeal soul. On the other hand, this is sometimes thought to refer to delirious speech that can happen during the end stage of pulmonary tuberculosis. So this might be a condition when there's heat in the lung and it's beginning to disturb the shen. As for the name, Tian Fu means heavenly palace. And this is just a common trend that most of our window of heaven points have the word heaven in the name. But as an alternative interpretation, Machiocha compares the name to Lung One. Remember, we said that the name of Lung One is Middle Palace because it has an effect on the middle jiao, treating rebellious stomach qi. Well, similarly, we could say that Lung Three is named Heavenly Palace because it has an effect on the head, which is the heaven part of the body treating things like insomnia, forgetfulness, dizziness, and vision problems. But for lung three, I would mainly remember that it's a window of heaven point and it calms the corporeal soul, treating things like sadness and grief. Lung four is four soon distal to the axillary fold. And this is another one that's just not super interesting. If a point doesn't have a category, then it doesn't always do a whole lot. It descends lung chi, like every other point on this channel. It's on the arm, so it treats arm pain. Maybe one thing that stands out is it regulates chi and blood in the chest, treating heart pain and palpitations. Because, again, the heart and lung are buddies, and they reside together in the chest. But all in all, lung four is just not very interesting, and it's not a commonly used point. Lung five, on the other hand, is a commonly used point. Lung five is at the crease of the elbow on the radial side of the biceps brachii tendon. The main action of lung five is to clear heat and descend lung qi. If heat gets into the lung, it can interfere with the lung's descending function and cause the qi to rebel back upwards, giving us things like cough, 
wheezing, asthma, and shortness of breath. Fever, dry mouth, and throat pain are all signs of heat. And like we said earlier, heat can cause bleeding as well. So we see things like coughing up blood and nosebleed. And when heat gets into the lung, that heat can cook down the fluids of the lung and thicken them into phlegm. So lung five has an action of resolving phlegm as well, treating cough with phlegm. Now, when it comes to clearing this heat, Machiocha emphasizes that lung 5 is mostly used for excess conditions, whereas Deadman says that lung 5 can be used for both excess heat and deficiency heat. It just depends on which points you combine it with. So if you want to treat deficiency heat, you might need to combine lung 5 with other points that nourish yin and moisten the lung. So that's something to keep in mind. Lung 5 is a he C point. Remember, he C points treat rebellious qi and diarrhea, and we see both of those here with cough, vomiting, and diarrhea. Lung 5 also regulates the water passages. You can maybe think that lung 5 is the he C water point, so it has an action of regulating the water passages. So again, if a pathogen obstructs the lung's descending function, then it can no longer descend fluids to the bladder and kidney, and we may end up with water retention. That's why we see things like edema, swelling of the limbs, and urinary retention. But if the lung is deficient, we may get frequent urination and enuresis. Lung 5 can be used in both situations. Besides that, lung 5 can also relax the sinews because it's right next to a sinew. Remember when we looked at the lung sinew channel, there was this binding site at the elbow right in the area of lung 5. So lung 5 can treat elbow pain and elbow stiffness. But because it's in the middle of the channel, lung 5 can actually relax the sinews all along the lung channel. So it's also good for shoulder pain, inability to raise the arm, and difficulty opening the hand. And the name of lung 5 is Chirzi Cubit Marsh because it's located on the cubital crease. And a marsh is kind of like a swamp. They tend to be hot and damp. So that's how I remember this point. Lung 5 is located in the pit of your elbow where it tends to get hot and sweaty. So lung 5 is good for clearing heat. And a marsh or a swamp is a place where there's a lot of standing water. So lung 5 also regulates water passages. So those are the things I would remember about lung 5. Lung 6 is on the forearm, 7 soon proximal to the wrist crease. So lung 6 is 7 soon up. And lung 6 is a she cleft point. Remember, she cleft points treat acute conditions and pain. So here we see acute conditions like throat pain, loss of voice, or fever without sweating, usually due to wind heat or wind dryness. Acute conditions and pain can also mean pain along the channel. So we see things like elbow pain, arm pain, difficulty flexing and extending the fingers, and inability to raise the arm. But really, in modern practice, lung 6 is principally used for acute asthma attack. So that's the type of acute condition we would be treating. And finally, remember that she cleft points on the yin channels have an additional action of regulating the blood or treating disorders of the blood. So here, lung 6 also stops bleeding for things like coughing up blood and vomiting blood. Lung 7 is one and a half soon proximal to the wrist crease, off the line, just proximal to the styloid process between the two tendons. Lung 7 is a very important point. We can see that it belongs to several different point categories, and it has a lot of functions. So this means that Lung 7 has a wide range of actions, and it's very commonly used in the clinic. So let's go through these functions one by one. First, remember that in the beginning, we said that the lung governs the exterior and the opening and closing of the pores. Well, lung 7 is one of our major points for releasing the exterior and expelling wind for both wind cold and wind heat. So fever and aversion to cold are signs that we have this pathogen on the exterior. And like we said before, if a wind cold or wind heat pathogen gets into the lung, it can block the descending of lung qi, resulting in cough, wheezing, or shortness of breath. So lung 7 also descends lung qi to treat these symptoms. And if that wind cold or wind heat pathogen interferes with the lung's action of descending the fluids, we may see 
facial edema, sudden swelling of the limbs, or urinary retention. So Lung 7 regulates the water passages to treat those symptoms as well. In addition to external wind, Lung 7 also treats internal wind as well, especially in the head and upper body. That's why we say it pacifies wind and phlegm, treating things like headache, facial paralysis, and epilepsy. Ma Dan Yang named it one of his 11 heavenly star points for treating one-sided headache, wind painful obstruction and numbness of the entire body, phlegm obstruction in the upper body, and lockjaw. Gao Wu listed it as one of his four command points, being the command point for the head and nape. So Lung 7 is often used for headache and stiff neck. Lung 7 is also the opening point for the Ren Mai, or conception vessel. The conception vessel is one of the eight extraordinary channels that we'll talk more about later. For now, we can just say that it's an extraordinary channel that runs up the anterior midline and connects with the uterus and genitals. So that's why we see Lung 7 treating conditions like uterine problems and genital problems. It's not that these things have anything to do with the lung, it's just that this point in particular is connected to the Ren Mai, so that's why it can treat those things. And finally, Lung 7 is a Luo connecting point, and this gives Lung 7 some very interesting features. So let's recall the functions of the Luo connecting points. Number one, they treat disorders of the yin-yang paired channel. So here, we see that Lung 7 opens the nose to treat nasal congestion and sneezing. Remember, the lung channel itself doesn't go to the nose, it only goes as high as the throat. But its yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel, does go to the nose, so that's why lung 7, the luo point, is able to treat nasal congestion. Next, low connecting points treat disorders along the pathway of the luo connecting channel. So we see here pain in the wrist, thenar eminence, and thumb, because that's the pathway of the luo connecting channel that we talked about in the beginning. And finally, low connecting points also treat psycho-emotional disorders. So here we see poor memory, palpitations, and laughter, again highlighting the connection between the lung and the heart. The name of lung 7 is Lie Chue, which means broken sequence. And this is referring to the fact that lung 7 is off the line of the lung channel, closer to the large intestine channel. So that's a lot of things, but like we said, Lung 7 is a very important point, so you should probably know all of those things. Next is Lung 8, which is one soon proximal to the wrist crease. And honestly, this is not a commonly used point. It's the Jing River and metal point of the lung channel. Classically, Jing River points are used to treat cough, shortness of breath, and fever and chills, so you would think this would be a big deal, but it's actually not. Machiocha mentions that it's good for problems of the throat, but even Deadman says that lung 8 is an infrequently used point. Lung 9 is located at the wrist crease on the radial side of the radial artery. Lung 9 is the yuan source point of the lung channel. Remember, on yin channels, yuan source points tonify the yin organs. So lung 9 tonifies the lung, specifically lung qi and lung yin. So if the lung is deficient, it can fail in its function of disseminating and descending, so we might see a chronic weak cough, shortness of breath, and yawning. Also, deficiency can lead to phlegm formation. So if lung qi is deficient, then there's not enough qi to move the fluids, so we can end up with copious watery phlegm. If lung yin is deficient, the heat can dry out the fluids, causing scanty dry phlegm. In either case, lung 9 tonifies the lung, descends lung qi, and resolves phlegm. Lung 9 is also the Shu stream point. Remember, Shu stream points treat body heaviness and pain in the joints. So lung 9 treats joint pain. And lung 9 is also one of the eight gathering points or eight hui meeting points. It's the meeting point of the vessels. And this makes sense because this is where we take the pulse during pulse diagnosis. So lung 9 can treat disorders of the blood, like coughing blood and vomiting blood, and also disorders of the vessels, like heart pain with choppy pulse, weak pulse, or absence of pulse. But like we said, lung 9 is the yuan source point. It's also the earth point on the metal channel, so that makes it the tonification point. So for lung 9, I would remember 
tonifies Lung Qi and Lung Yin. Lung Ten is on the thenar eminence of the hand at the midpoint of the first metacarpal bone. Lung Ten is the ying spring and fire point on the lung channel. Remember, ying spring points are good for clearing heat, so lung ten clears lung heat, both excess heat and deficiency heat. Now we've learned a couple points on this channel that are good for clearing heat. If we wanted to differentiate them, we could maybe say that lung one and lung five are better for heat combined with phlegm, whereas lung ten is better for just heat. One major application of this heat clearing action is lung ten benefits the throat. Remember, the lung channel ascends to the throat, so by clearing heat, lung ten can benefit the throat, treating sore throat, dry throat, or voice loss. Because it clears heat, lung ten can also treat bleeding conditions due to heat, such as coughing up blood or vomiting blood. And then Deadman has this funny action that lung ten. Harmonizes the stomach and heart, but this is a little bit confusing because he doesn't mean that lung ten harmonizes the relationship between the stomach and the heart. What he actually means is lung ten harmonizes the relationship between the lung and the stomach, and it also harmonizes the relationship between the lung and the heart. So we've seen this before, where rebellious lung chi and rebellious stomach chi can occur together. So lung ten can also treat stomach issues like abdominal pain, vomiting, and hiccup. And like we said in the beginning, the lung and the heart have a very close relationship. They share a residence in the upper jaw, so heat in the lung can very easily transmit to the heart and disturb the shen. So by clearing heat, lung ten can also calm the shen, treating symptoms like sadness, fear, anger, and mania. As for the name. E G means fish border, and I'm assuming this is because the thenar eminence looks like the belly of a fish. But for this one, I remember clears heat and benefits the throat. And lastly, lung eleven is on the radial side of the thumb, point one soon from the corner of the nail. Lung eleven is the Jing Well point of the lung channel. Jing Well points are superficial and have a quick effect, so they're able to restore consciousness for loss of consciousness due to wind stroke. Jing Well points quickly clear excess and treat the upper end of the channel, so lung eleven also benefits the throat. So here we have two points that clear heat and benefit the throat. The difference is lung ten can be used for both excess heat and deficiency heat. Whereas lung eleven is used for severe conditions due to excess heat or even fire toxicity. In fact, classically, lung eleven was indicated for a disease called childhood throat moth, which more or less corresponds to the modern disease tonsillitis. So for these severe conditions, we would usually prick to bleed lung eleven. Jing Well points also treat fullness below the heart, so lung eleven treats fullness below the heart. And finally, lung eleven is a Sun Tzu Miao ghost point, so it's used to treat mania and epilepsy. This is probably due to the fact that this point can strongly clear heat, and also because the lung has such a close relationship to the heart, so it's able to quickly calm severe shen problems. The name of lung eleven is Xiao Shang. Now, in modern Chinese, the character Shang means merchant or business person. So some books will translate the point as lesser merchant. However, in classical Chinese, this character Shang refers to one of the five musical notes, the one which is associated with the metal phase. So other books will translate this as lesser metal or just lesser Shang. And we'll see this character Shang come up in other point names that are associated with the metal phase. For example, spleen five is Shang Chiu. Shang Mound, and it's the metal point on the spleen channel. So that's lung eleven. It's a Jing Well point, so it revives consciousness and clears excess, and it also benefits the throat for more severe conditions. So that was a very in-depth look at these points. Let's go ahead and do a quick review where we just touch on the major actions of the major points on this channel. Lung one is the front mu point of the lung, so it treats conditions of the lung organ. And it's especially useful for excess conditions like lung heat or phlegm in the lung. Lung three is a window of heaven point. 
it calms the corporeal soul, treating sadness and grief. Lung five is the he si water point. It clears lung heat, especially when there's phlegm involved, and it regulates the water passages. Lung six is the she cleft point, so it treats acute conditions and pain, especially acute asthma attacks. Lung seven is the lul connecting point. It's one of our major points for releasing the exterior. It's the command point of the head and nape, so it's commonly used in headache and stiff neck, and it's the opening point of the ren mai. Lung nine is the yuan source point, so it tonifies lung qi and lung yin. Lung 10 is the ying spring fire point. It clears heat and benefits the throat. Lung 11 is the jing well point, and like all jing well points, it revives consciousness. It also quickly clears excess and treats the upper end of the channel, so lung 11 also benefits the throat, especially for severe conditions due to excess heat or heat toxicity. So now that we've completed our review of the Han Tai Yin Lung Channel, here are a few things you can do next in order to continue your studies and really solidify this information in your brain. On the website tcmstudy.net, there's a practice test you can take which goes over both point location and point function. After you click each answer, you'll get a short explanation, so that's a good way to repeat the information. If you want to focus on point location, there's a Quizlet-style set of online flashcards that you can go through. Hover your mouse over the card to make it flip over. You can also shuffle the deck to make it a little bit harder. If you want to review this lecture again, you can also listen to just the audio version. That way, if you are in your car, at the gym, or going for a walk, you can listen to the lecture without having the video player open. Links to all of those things are below. And if you're a member of the Patreon, there are a few extra bonuses on the Patreon feed as well. First, there's a bonus video that goes along with this lecture. This video was already getting pretty long, so this is just a few extra footnotes of things that I didn't mention here, but that you might find interesting. There's also some examples of cases where I've used these points in my own clinical practice, so maybe that will give you some more context around how these points are used. And there's also a read-along ebook. I once heard this interesting hack where if you read an ebook and listen to the audiobook at the same time, then you read faster and retain more information. So this ebook is basically a transcript of this video, so you can listen and read at the same time, and that way you're engaging more of your senses. I left the margins pretty wide, so you can add in your own notes if you want. So those are a couple bonuses that are just for the members of the Patreon as a way of saying, Thank you for supporting the YouTube channel and the website tcmstudy.net. So if you got value out of this lecture and would like to give something back, consider becoming a member of the Patreon. This is the easiest way to support this work, and you'll also get access to special bonuses like the ones I just mentioned. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This lecture is part of the library of content that's available for free on the website tcmstudy.net. The goal of this website is to help students like you learn the material, pass your tests, and ultimately become a better healer. Because I firmly believe that the better you understand this material, the more effective you will be in the treatment room healing your patients. Of course, there's also the reality that you have to pass your tests in order to get through school and get your license. And again, my belief is that if you take the time to really understand the material the first time around, that means you'll be able to spend less time studying to review for your big test. That's why I spend so much time explaining why things are the way they are, rather than just telling you to memorize a list of facts. Hopefully, when you do it that way, by the time you get to your boards, you won't need to spend a lot of time and money on expensive review courses. You can just go back and look over the notes that you have to refresh your memory. So if you like this kind of thing, be sure to check out the website tcmstudy.net for more videos, lectures, handouts, flashcards, and practice tests, and we'll see you in the next one.